Ciao, 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 go wow. <laughs> okay, uh, we're gonna go and move in to uh, Venus in Aquarius. And again, the ego goes into greater complexity here, uh, beginning when it enters Libra and beginning to morph as we move throughout the science and throughout the ages. So, without further ado, let's talk about Venus in Aquarius as, as it pertains to the human female. This is not a uh, merengue martini, but just a drink with merengue and vodka, okay? Because the martini, let me tell you, it will like, boom, boom, knock you out. Now let's choose the music, the right music. I got no donations, by the way, for Venus in um, Capricorn, so I didn't do a part four. So, and I'm not going to go back and do a retraction, even if I get the donation. Once I do that, I don't do that anymore. Uh, so now I'm going to go and I'm going to move. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. The Venus in Aquarius woman. Oh. A delight. Kind of like the Scorpio and Pisces, you know, and Leo. The opposite polarity of Aquarius. When a woman is born with Venus in Aquarius, she doesn't want to follow the rules when it comes to love. No, preferring to love in her own way. Unfettered, undeterred, unfettered by convention of what is supposed to be or usually done. Okay? Uh, she's very future oriented. I mean, uh, a tad unconventional at times, especially in love, but we can say this for the most part in everything that she does, okay? And there's an unmistakable free spirit in her that shows up almost obviously when it comes to the matters of the heart. But that could be misleading because then people think that they have a carte blanche or an open book with her. That's when people get a slap in the face where they get a rude reality check. And it's not that she sets out to do this, you know? Um, this is not to say that uh, that she will not fall in love or cannot fall in love or that she's not capable. The Venus in Aquarius woman is quite capable of falling in love and truly offer something beautiful and unique and, 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 and special. Remember, the opposite polarity of uh, Aquarius is Leo. So the woman is, is quite capable of showing love and of, being, and of being just as lovable and just as passionate as any other woman in the Zodiac with uh, Venus in this position, okay? Infatuations happen easily with her, but true love can only be a, 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 a a special situation that can occur for the Venus in Aquarius woman once in a lifetime. She can be a little bit offbeat and a little bit elusive. Huh? When she does make a commitment, though, this I will say to her credit, uh, she gener generally sticks to her choice. She generally sticks to her uh, fundamental constructs and values, which again, remember, may not be uh, conventional. Actually, they are quite unconventional. The commitment that the Venus and Aquarius woman generally makes has little difference in order, in order, in, you know, it's not about the person, that she makes a commitment 
to commit or a commitment not to commit, you would think that it's about the person that she's with. It's not about that. It's about her. And it's about what her idiosyncrasies are at the moment. Venus in Aquarius. Okay. I'm starting to have this wonderful dish dinner here. But I get so much criticism, even eating, that I'm just not going to do it because then I'm going to smack lip when I do that. That's when you know that you're enjoying the food. But I'm not going to do that so I don't offend certain people on the air. And I'll wait. And then I'll eat later. But understand that and by me doing this, this is, this is a form of delayed gratification, which is also very typical since we're not talking about it. With Venus in Aquarius. Tito Rodriguez, 1951. Oh my God, I gotta get the album. Oh my God. Okay. Um, understand that. Um, the 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 Venus in Aquarius woman is quite proud to be different. She's proud to do things in an unconventional way. Okay. Following the beaten track simply does not sit well with her. The conventional trappings and the conventional rules when it comes to courtship, the courtship game, and, and, and following a relationship to its end. Remember, Leo, the opposite polarity of Aquarius, deals with the courtship game, you know, the mating dance, you know. Um, she's not going to follow the conventional norms of courtship and conquest. She might have a different race or have a different culture, but not her own. Venus in Aquarius. She, she, she has an aloof air about herself. No. And this aloofness, this mid-sagittal approach and even behavior when it comes to love can seem very attractive to the opposite sex, okay? If you are looking for commitment, you'll find it with this person at a later date. She's not quick to commit. Because to commit to a partner is a form of a, of a prison. It's a form of a, a, a barricade that one puts themselves in. Well, they're now with this person in this barricade that they've created. And that's it. They cannot dibble and dabble any other muscle of a man or a woman when you're born with Venus in Aquarius. Okay? Uh, but this is what she falls in love. If she doesn't fall in love, we are dealing with a woman who would rather have a table full of pastries, all different types of pastries, and each one is better than the other, and that's one table of all kinds of different pastries. There are 28 other tables with 28 other varieties of tastes and styles. Just endless varieties. Think of American Bachelor. You know, the show, American Bachelor, or The Bachelorette. Think of yourself as The Bachelorette in these, you know, um, series, you know. American, um, what is it? You know, uh, matchmaker, you know, the bachelorette. Let, let me go with that one because that one is the one that I remember and I've seen maybe an episode or two about. 
Well, if we're going to make a contrast or an analogy about the Venus and Aquarius woman, we can compare her to the show The Bachelorette or The Bachelor. She is the Venus and Aquarius woman, and she's got 12 men to choose from. Now, if we're talking about the Leo, which is the opposite polarity of Aquarius, she will be content and having all of them begging and gnawing at her feet. And then she'll choose one. Or my choose not to choose any. That's the Leo, that's the Leo woman. But when you're dealing with the Aquarian woman or with Venus in the Aquarian woman in particular, or Venus in Aquarius, any woman, regardless of the sun sign, you're dealing with a woman, again, dealing with the same bachelorette model, she will love every single one of those 22 or 12 men and fuck them down too. And she will distinguish which men she likes more. She will love them all equally. This is Venus in Aquarius. Because she's going to find something genuinely interesting and genuinely beautiful and something that she can connect with, connect to. And you have to understand that it is the mental connection that most attracts her, most appeals to her. Without that mental connection, nothing pretty much matters to her. Uh, the relationship connection that she'll make with these men will not be long-lasting. Memorable, but not long-lasting. Venus in Aquarius. So understand that when we're dealing with the Venus in Aquarius woman, How can I put it? How can I put it? Let me get my notes. Let me get my notes. Oh, no. Let me get my notes because I usually write this. Um, uh, here we go. Uh, you have to understand that uh, if she's looking for a commitment, like I mentioned a few seconds ago, you better be worth it. You know, she is positive, gleeful, but she's not ostentatious and openly expository. But here's the thing. Which is a little bit odd because when it comes to Leo, which is the opposite polarity of Aquarius, the, the uh, Leo woman loves praise, adulation, even hero worship. But the Aquarian woman does not like any of that. She doesn't like to be complimented. She doesn't like... Um, to, you can show love and appreciation and kindness, and she will hate you for it. Not really hate you, that's a very strong word, but she'll be annoyed with you if you make too much of a fuss about it. You know, genuine kindness and affection and praise for anything that she might do for you seems offensive to her. She wants to be unassuming. She doesn't want personal praise from you. She'll resent you for it. Uh, you have to understand that Aquarius deals with the universal, and Leo deals with the secular and the individual experience. Um, if you're praising her based on some individual praise, even though it's well worth it and it's true and value and validated. She will not like you for it. She'll be annoyed with you. 
and maybe even possibly abuse you or mistreat you when your only intent was to give her praise and adulation. She doesn't seem to like it. She seems repulsed by it and will proceed to mistreat you if you are that type of person. This is one of the dark secrets of Venus in Aquarius. It really is. It really, really is. So then, what do you do? How do you transcend these self imposed limitations that you put yourself in? Let me take a little bite. It's grilled chicken, you know, and a pasta dish, you know, noodles, something like that. Oh, delicious. It's almost 12 midnight. So I'll be done for the evening. So, another aspect of this combination with Venus in Aquarius. It does us a level of curiosity. When it comes to matters of the heart, and we're dealing with the courtship game, we're dealing with a woman who is naturally curious. She's intellectually astute and brilliant. But love and romance is not her forte. So she approaches love and romance with a certain curiosity, which is kind of uh, analogous to a doctor or a scientist observing a hamster in a laboratory experiment. Uh huh. Where you become a specimen to be studied and be dissected. The woman born with Venus and Aquarius is a dissector. She's a surgeon. And she thinks that by breaking apart the different component parts of a person or even a situation that she can get at the source when it comes to love and intimacy. No, no, Miss Aquarius, Miss Venus and Aquarius. Uh huh. No, no. Love and the process of uh, of intimacy doesn't seem to flow very smoothly with the Venus in Aquarius position. There's a lot of self doubt here. Understand that the uh, the ruler of Aquarius is Uranus. But before Uranus was discovered in 1841, Saturn was the classical co-ruler of Aquarius. And we know that Aquarius, well, Capricorn, uh, Saturn, the ruler of uh, Capricorn and the classical co-ruler of Aquarius is very cold, detached, clinical, and accepted, sobering, lacking in imagination, but assenting regulations, rules, and rigidity. You know, Venus in Aquarius Rhea 
Thank you. And a couple of seconds feels like minutes, right? When you're doing this and you're waiting in anticipation. Okay. Um uh, I, I think uh, when it comes to again uh, relationship, what was once considered once you are in a relationship with an Aquarius woman or Venus in Aquarius woman, regardless of the sun sign, you you what attracts you about a partner becomes annoying. And becomes just annoying. Well, I brought, well, I tried to you in the first place. In the first place, now irritates you and becomes annoying. Because the thing with Venus in Aquarius as a woman is that it completely, you know, your infatuations and your desires are not long lasting. They can leave you, and just as quickly, you can lose interest in your partner. You can lose interest in the whole courtship, and it can happen quite suddenly without warning. And this strikes insecurity in the Venus and Aquarius woman. Because then she doesn't trust her own judgment and value when it comes to commitment. When she commits, she suddenly does not want to stay committed. If she doesn't commit, she has a longing to commit. But when she commits, she wants out. And it can make the relationship go sour. It's almost like she's afraid to trust the commitment that she engages in because she feels that it's not going to be long lasting and that somehow she's going to fall out of love just as easily as she fell in love. And that does happen from time to from time to time, but not only or exclusively to the Venus in Aquarius woman. This happens to all women. It's just that the Venus in Aquarius woman has a harder time managing it because it happens more frequently with her than most when you're born with Venus in Aquarius. Uh-huh. Oh, no, yeah. Now we are going to find a song that matches. But I kind of like this one a little better. I kind of do. So I'm going to keep this one. Okay. Again, like a lab rat in a cage, uh, the Venus in Aquarius woman approaches love, love like, an, like, an, like a scientist uh, absorbing a hamster or a white mouse in some kind of lab rat animal lab. And if you've ever seen an animal lab of scientists that are trying to find cures for cancer and they test their subjects with uh, uh, hamsters or mice, if you ever go to fa a facility like that where the scientists are dressed in white, with the, they got uh, goggles, gauze, you know. It's very sad and scary and icky to watch that. Uh, yeah, we need that because without experimenting on these uh, lab rats, we cannot find cure for certain diseases. This is the approach psychologically that the Venus and Aquarius woman does when she approaches the matters of the heart. Is she's an, a, a scientist and she's looking at the mouse like in a lab rat. 
What is this love situation here? And she's holding the mouse by the tail. While he's squirming in her, in her glass. And she don't care about the pain that she's causing him. She's so Aquarius and so detached emotionally. So she's like a robot. This mouse. Look at it squirm. No, she could be rigid, robotic, which is and, and quite aseptic. A real turn off to the opposite sex. The problem is that the Venus in Aquarius woman is not in psychological awareness that she's coming across like this. <laughs> Venus in Aquarius. She has to be brought up to speed by a passionate man, an emotional man. I love you! Those types of men who could fuck her down good and open her up like Venus in Capricorn. You know? And, and, and if it's a man, he'll meet a quirky, funny, offbeat girl that will break his rigidity and his robotic 9 to 5 clinical existence, which offers no joy. All work and no play. I don't know about you. But that's, that's, that's kind of boring. So, when it comes, you have to understand. Sex, sexual intimacy, sexual intercourse, always made my time. Sexual intercourse, all that belongs to Scorpio. Mm. The mushrooms, oh my god. Scorpio deals with personal integration with another human being. This union, which begins in Scorpio through sex union, ends immediately in Sagittarius. In Sagittarius, you have the extended family that the sex in Scorpio produce. Now, it's time to educate and build and move away from the basal energies and requirements of sex and move to a higher level of that same energy in a form that's more universal and more cosmic. And that doesn't lend for sex to have a space for intimacy and personal experience. That ends in Sagittarius. Well, and when we enter Aquarius, past Capricorn, we're heading towards God. We're heading, Pisces is the last sign. So sex becomes less and less important and less and less and less and less psychologically necessary for happiness. It's part of happiness, but it's not the reason for living and existence, which sex can very well be for the signs of Scorpio below. From Scorpio below, yes, sex is important, almost crucial. But past Scorpio to Pisces, sex becomes less important, less necessary, and becomes less effective as a manipulative tool to control these signs from Sagittarius to Pisces. So, if you think that you are going to, if you think that you got dick or you got pussy and that you're going to slay the Venus and Aquarius woman or man, you're going to feel so small because no, no matter how good you are, how big you are, to her, you are nothing but this small in here. Never mind your organ in here. Because, again, sex and its basal carnal 
desires and and, 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 and and just the essence of what sex is, which is all physical and mental, but it eventually leads to physical. And it's still, even if it's not even with another physical human being, let's say it's mental sex, you're still preoccupying the mind with sex with another human being. If you are in the Aquarian phase, heading towards Pisces, the mental sex you should be having is sex with the Creator, tantric sex, sacred sex, sex magic. Now that, if we go there, now we're going into the proper direction towards the Kundalini, or the releasing of the Kundalini, that can lead to elevation from the flesh, from the animal stage, from the human stage, to the divinity aspect of who we are. Venus in Aquarius. With Venus in Aquarius, you can have sacred sex, magical sex, or tantric sex, and be quite successful in reaching union with the divine. This begins in Capricorn and culminates in Pisces when we release the physical carbon matter and we merge back to God and leave this place below or behind, carbon matter, ugh, and not return. Venus in Aquarius is quite an altruistic position for our Venus. This is all intellectual. Now, I have reached 31 minutes. I, I gave an extra seven minutes. We're done with part one.